Hi students, welcome back to my class. In the last class, we discussed about the factors affecting the behavior of gases. Today, we are going to learn about one of the important gas laws in this chapter. Let's start the class. Let's learn the relation between volume and pressure. See the figure given in your textbook. A definite mass of a gas is kept in a closed cylinder is shown in figure A. Suppose the gas is transferred to the other cylinder without changing the temperature as shown in figure B. Is there any change in the number of molecules? What happens to the pressure when the volume is decreased? From the figure, it is clear that the molecules remain the same for both cylinders A and B. In cylinder B, the volume decreases due to increase in pressure. As the pressure increases, the molecules come closer and the volume decreases. In the first cylinder A, the pressure of the molecule is very less, hence the volume increases. Let's see another experiment showing the relation between volume and pressure. Here a balloon is inserted inside and the syringe is pulled inwards. As a result what happened? The balloon doesn't compress as the atmospheric pressure remains same as the air escapes through the opening. But if we press the piston by keeping its nozzle closed, what change do you observe in the volume of gas inside the syringe? The volume decreases as the pressure increases. Students, what relation do you arrive at between pressure and volume of gas? It is Robert Boyle, the British physicist and chemist, who established the relationship between volume and pressure of a gas through experiments. This relation is known as Boyle's law. Boyle's law states that at a constant temperature, Volume of definite mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. If P is the pressure and V is the volume, then P into V is a constant. Mathematically, we can express the equation as P1 V1 equal P2 V2, where P is the pressure, V is the volume and temperature is a constant. Look at some of the examples of Boyle's law. Let's define some of the applications of Boyle's law. First one is about syringe. You might have seen some fluids are drawn into syringe. Here the volume inside the syringe is increased. As the pressure decreases inside, the pressure on outside of the syringe is greater. Hence the fluids are forced into the syringe. The next application is the working of our human diaphragm. When you exhale, the diaphragm rib muscles relax and the chest cavity gets smaller. Here, the volume inside the cavity decreases but the pressure inside the cavity increases. Hence, the air from the lungs flows out of the airway to outside air that is from high pressure to low pressure. See the textual question. The size of the air bubbles rising from the bottom of an aquarium increases. Can you explain the reason? It is because the pressure on the bottom of an aquarium is very high and the volume of the air bubble will be very small. As the pressure decreases on the surface of the aquarium, the volume of the air bubble will be also very high. Hence the size of air bubble rises as it reaches on the surface of the aquarium. Let's see a mathematical problem related to Boyle's law. Examine the data given in the table. Here the temperature and number of molecules are kept constant. Some of the values of pressure and volume are given. You are asked to calculate P into V and identify the gas law related to this. According to Boyle's law, the temperature remains constant and the pressure varies with the volume. By using the mathematical equation P1V1 equal P2V2, we can find P into V. In all three cases, it is clear that P into V is a constant. That means, 
Boyle's law is the gas law related to this. So students, let's recall what we learned today. We learned one of the important gas laws, that is Boyle's law. According to this law, at a constant temperature, volume of a definite mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. Remember, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. As the pressure increases, volume decreases and vice versa. Mathematically, we can express the above equation as P1 V1 equal P2 V2. Here, PV is a constant. Okay students, let's wind up today's class. Hope you understood today's session. If you have any doubts, please inform me through the class WhatsApp group. Thank you.